everyone. Kesava back with another example today. And today we're going to be diving into snow loads and how to define them on your structure. Um, so what we have here, we have our little office building, little stick figure. That's all we need, you know, kind of like life. All you need is a little stick figure that gets the point across. So if we are not great artists, that's okay. As long as we get that uh, point conveyed, we are there. Um, yeah, okay. So what else do we need for to define snow loads? Well, we need a building type. So we have an office with a gable roof. What's a gable roof? Well, this is a typical gable roof. Basically, you have your peak of the roof at the center line um, of the roof, and it has some type of pitch to it on either side. Um, the pitch or the slope of the roof that is designated usually in our design drawings with or the uh, actually the architect's design drawings um, with this symbol here and what this means is a 612 roof pitch which means for every 12 inches of run there is six inches of rise so run being your horizontal dimension and rise being your vertical dimension so 12 inches, 6 inches, 12 inches, 6 inches, 12 inches, 6 inches, and that gets your roof line. And we need to find today what our P sub S is. That is our roof snow load, and that's designated as P sub S, kind of like a pattern, loading pattern like this. Um, we have our roof, roof type defined as slate roofing, and our location, um, we are going to call this office building being constructed in central Massachusetts. A little shout out to my home state of Massachusetts. Not from central Mass, but um, close enough. So I've also determined that from that criteria, we have a, uh, a snow ground, a ground snow load of 35 PSF and an importance factor for snow of 1.0. And that's under a risk category of two. Well, how do we get these things? You know, I feel like in a lot of examples that you see um, in textbooks, they just kind of throw this criteria at you and they're like, okay, here you go, start designing. But you actually need to figure out where this comes from in the real world. So what we typically do is we move over to our ASCE 716. You've seen me use this before. And again, we're going to be diving into it today. Um, and for our importance factor, we're going to go to page five. And we're going to go to table 1.5-2. And this basically defines all of your importance factors based on, based on your risk category. Um, I won't be going today into risk category and how to define that. Um, if you would like me to go further into that, um, please leave a comment uh, under this video. And I'd be happy to do that as my next video. But today, um, for simplicity's sake, our risk category is going to be two, and that's for just about, that's most office building criteria and residential structures. So we're going to assume risk category two and snow importance factor, I sub S, then equals 1.0. So that's our importance factor. Um, the remainder of this video, we're going to be diving into chapter seven on, called snow loads, and that's on page 51. And... Next, we need our ground snow load, and where did we define that? Well, if you flip the page and go to page 52, 53, you have a map of the continental U.S., and it has snow loading, ground snow load values across the, across the U.S. So we said central mass. So we actually have, if we can focus in for you, we actually have a bunch of variations in snow, um, ground snow load. Uh, but for simplicity's sake, again, we have that 35, that stands for 35 PSF. We'll call that where our office is going to be. If we went a little more north, it'd actually fall into 40. And if we went even higher, that would designate 50 PSF. So, but we're going to say right here, so 35 PSF. And as a little background info, if you don't fall into one of these areas um, that has a value, instead you fall into this blue shaded area, designated as CS, that is site-specific locations and that basically means um, that you need to go further and find the state local code um, and because they they have such variations in their snow due to you know mountainous regions and valleys that in very short spans of distance the snow loading criteria at least for ground can change significantly you know you could be up top in a mountain with you know 60 70 80 100 psf or you'd be down in a valley where you only see 10, 20, 30 PSF. Um, so 
they break it down a lot further and go into a lot more detail in their local code. So that's what this means. As well as if you see the big orange areas, and it actually just says straight up, see note for Colorado, New Mexico, that just talks about each state's local code that you need to get into. Um, but yeah, we have our value, so we're going to move on. Um, so we have P sub G and I sub S. Next, we need to find our minimum roof snow load, P sub M. And there's two cri uh, criteria that determine which equation you're going to use. Where, and that's you can find this in page 53, where PG is 20 PSF or less, or where PG exceeds 20 PSF. So our PG was 35. That's what we found up here. And that means we exceed 20 PSF. So our equation for finding our minimum roof snow load is 20 times your importance factor. Well, for us, we know our importance factor was 1.0, because it's a risk category 2 building. So PM equals 20 times IS. Plug that in. 20 PSF. All right, that's your minimum roof snow load. We'll hang on to that for later to compare. Next, we need to find P sub F, which is actually your flat roof snow load. But you might be saying, well, wait a minute, hang on, we got a sloped roof here, so why aren't we looking at sloped roofs? Well, you actually always start out with a flat roof um, snow loading value, and then depending on what type of roof geometry you add, you have, you apply a, d a different set of factors um, to get you that, that loading criteria. So we need P sub F. And we can go to that if you flip back to the initial page of chapter 7. And you go down here for flat roof snow loads. PF equals 0 0.7 CECTISPG. Well, that's just a factor. We have I, we have PG, we need CE and CT. CE is your exposure factor, and that we're going to flip a couple pages in Chapter 7. That is Table 7.3-1 on page 58, and that's going to be, so for this problem, we've defined our surface roughness category as B. Um, you can find that, you can see C section 26.7, that's actually a wind category. Um, but it defines your surface roughness. And that's basically talking about defining your surface around your structure and what you, and then classifying that. Um, so I won't get into that further. Um, you can go check it out. But we'll say surface roughness B. That's a lot of cases. And then <clears throat> you have your expo how exposed your structure is or your roof is. Um, and basically meaning exposed to the elements, to the snow. So we're going to assume partially exposed because there's going to be an area where there's other office buildings of similar size. So you might have some buildings that are slightly bigger that are shading and um, protecting the parts of the building. You might have some trees in there that are protecting parts of it, but then you might have other areas that are completely exposed. So we're going to call that partially exposed with a uh, C sub E of 1.0. Next we have... CT, right? That's the last variable we have. And that's your thermal factor. So again, same page, the next table, 7.3-2. Your thermal factor um, will go into um, different criteria here and then give you a value. And actually, it goes into freezer buildings, unheated and open air structures, continuously heated greenhouses, structures kept just above freezing, or all other, all structures except indicated below. So all those other weird structures, if it's not one of those special cases, then it's, then it's the top one, which comes out to CT of 1.0. All right, so 1.0, 1.0, that's easy. And our, we know our importance factor is 1.0. Um, we plug all that in, that gets you a flat roof snow load of 24.5 PSF, which is greater than your P minimum of 20 PSF. So we're going to use the flat, flat roof snow load, 24.5 PSF. Lastly, we do have a slope to our roof. So we need our C sub S value um, because our PS or our sloped roof snow load equals PS equals, excuse me, PS equals C sub S, P sub F. 
So our flat roof snow times our CS value. CS can be designated on page 59, up top in these slanted charts. And what you'll see here is different categories. So we have a sloped roof in all of them. Okay, that's ours. You have a warm roofs with CT less than or equal to 1.0, or cold roofs or cold roofs with C you know, greater than 1.2 or larger. Well, we have a warm roof with CT less than or equal to 1.0. CT is 1.0. So we're going to be using this chart. And remember how we talked about slate roofing surface before? Well, slate is actually a slippery surface. So we are going to be using a slippery surface in this case. And then you have slippery roof surfaces where R is greater than 30 degrees. Um, or you have unvented roof surfaces where R is, for unvented roof surfaces, or R greater than 20 degrees for um, ventilated roofs. Well, we have a ventilated roof because that's just standard um, office construction. So, and so we're going to be using this. So we're going to be on this sloped line, dashed line here. We have the pitch of our roof, 6 on 12. That's the pitch of our roof. You know, the rise of 6, run of 12. And that's going to fall down until we hit, uh, where are we right here? Until we hit our slope dash line. And we're going to go over, and that'll be our CS value. So our CS value in this case is 0 0.7. And if you don't have, flash over here for you. If you don't have this designation on your roof, you can also determine the degree, the, rope slo the roof slope, and the degree of your roof. Um, just with some, you know, soak a toe or something. So it's also down here. So if you had 30 degrees, then you'd go up, get it, and go over. So, but we have a 612 there. Boom, 0 0.7 to CS. We come back and we know CS is that. We plug it in, multiply it by our P sub F. That gets us 17.2 pounds per square foot of snow loading on our office building in central Massachusetts. And there you have it. So if we go back up to our diagram, that is going to be 17.2 pounds per square foot. And you'd use that load in other loads, um, dead loads, live load, roof live loads, apply combinations to them and start designing your, uh, you know, your roof members, whether it be trusses or joists, um, you know, steel, is it wood, all this type of stuff. So we won't be getting that into that today. This is just determining loading criteria. Um, but if you'd like to take it a step further and you want me to design a roof rafter, please let me know in the comments again, and I'd be happy to do that. Until next time, this is Kestova. I'll see you guys later.